Hi everybody, thank you for watching Sandra's Art Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to cover these outlets. To me, it's an eyesore, and since we moved into the house, I thought, I always had it in the back of my head, I'm going to cover that outlet. Well, guess what? Now that I've been doing this for other people, and I see that there is an interest uh, for people to either get them done or learn how to get them done, you know, so they can do it for themselves because they have some kind of artistic abilities. So today is your lucky day. I'm going to show you how I do it. Alrighty, so I start off with a sheet cover, all right, and I actually split it because this is like a pocket sheet cover. And I split it and I just want the single piece. And then I have a, this is a spare outlet cover that I have. And it happens to be the same size of my outlets. So what I'm going to do is trace this onto this sheet and, and then cut it out, all right? Try to center this as much as I can. I know this is gonna be a hard one to see, but here are the corners, okay? So just center it as much as you can. And this doesn't have to be like such a precise cut. And I'm using a permanent marker for this on plastic. And then I take an X-Acto knife and I go on the inside lines because if I go on the outside line then my stencil is going to be a little bit too big and I want it to be snug. If it happens to be a little bit too big you can always use tape right in between your outlet and a plastic stencil that we just made. And I place that on the side and now I want to clean my outlet as best as I can. I use a soapy sponge and I'm focusing mostly on the center of my outlet. Don't worry about the edges at this point because later we'll be taking the outlet cover apart. So you want to clean it really good towards the center because this is still connected to electricity and it's easier with the cover, right? So once I cleaned it really good, I grab my sand block and I'm going to focus again in the center part of this outlet because it's easy that way. I don't have to worry about the edges because in a moment I'm taking that outlet apart, right? So the sandpaper block is going to be like a 400, 500, 600, something like that, a high grid. If you go too low on the grid, then you'll be putting scratch marks that will be really hard to uh, hide, you know, when you're painting. So I do grab the corner of the sand block and I go in between the edge of the outlet cover and the outlet. You know what I'm talking about. You're seeing the video. So once that's nice and clean, I want to take apart my outlet cover. And this is where I get a little more dedicated to the edges. And by the way, just a quick reminder that if you have anything sharp laying around, make sure you put a cork on it or some kind of cover to protect yourself because it's so easy to forget that these sharp items are laying around and we don't want to have any accidents. So now that my outlet cover is off, I can just totally get those edges, the inner edges and the outer edges really good with the sandpaper. And it really doesn't take that much effort. It's just, you know, a little scuff and that's good enough because we wanted to have a little bite for the paint to stick. After assembling this outlet again, I'm going to get my material ready, which is just a little bit of water, some paintbrushes, and you can use a lot of your old paintbrushes too. And this here is a little outside paint primer. You make sure your paint primer is a water-based paint primer because if it's oil and then you paint with acrylics, you're going to actually ruin your project. And here I'm grabbing just a little bit. I don't have to like overload my brush or anything. And I grab the stencil that we made a little earlier and I'm going to protect as much as I can the walls from getting paint primer on it, but I'm not too worried about it because it's really easy to scrape this paint right off the granite with either a credit card or if you're not too concerned about putting scratches on it, then you can actually grab a straight edge racer and remove the dry paint on the granite. As you're letting that part dry, you want to gather the rest of your materials. In this case, I'm using acrylic paints that are very inexpensive and I can actually find them at Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Amazon. I will leave a link 
On the description of all the materials I'm using here, I am not making any money off of any of these products, but I hope that this makes it easier for you. So there's a lot of playing with the colors when you're trying to match the colors on your backsplash. And don't be afraid to play with them. It's only paint. Like the worst thing that can happen is you get this avocado green that doesn't belong there, but it doesn't matter because you can tone it down and you can keep playing with it until you get the right color. And a lot of times as I'm doing this, because I know I can remove the paint when it's dry, um, I actually paint right onto my backsplash and I can see whether this color is blending right in or I need to do something else to it. So I play with my colors until I get the right tones. Once I have a match, which to me a match would be the most predominant color that I see on my backsplash, which is that very light, earthy, brown, ochreish color. As you see, I feel like this is the one color that is most matchy to the whole backsplash. And you see, I have a little bit of dry paint right there on the edge. I'm going to clean it right up with that straight edge racer. And I really don't care if the first layer of paint is very uneven because it actually helps me create the texture that I'm looking for to match my outlet to my backsplash. You're probably thinking, why bother cleaning it up if you're going to have more paint land on the granite and you don't really care? Well, at this point, what I'm trying to do is observe what the color of the edges are. That's why it is very important for me to have the clean edges around the outlet because I want to transition those colors into the outlet. So the way I start doing this is here I have like a very old brush that's kind of like frayed out. But I love this brush for doing outlets because it helps me with, you know, texture. So here I work from the outside in. So if I see swirls, I try to mimic that. If I see that it's just chunks, I try to mimic that. And that is what it's all about. Mimicking what you see on the immediate perimeters and trying to extend whatever it is that is right around the outlet into the outlet. So don't try to rush into this, especially if you're just starting. Don't try to rush into it. Don't think that, you know, you apply a couple of colors and you just don't see it yet because it takes like a little bit of layering and continue to go back and forth. And sometimes you have to make a little bit of correction on the colors. Here, I see that my darker colors, which is a black, and I mixed a little bit of brown. And I see how on the camera, it looks a little bluish. And I try to correct it several times and it's always gonna have a little bit of a bluish cast through the lens. So if you're thinking, oh my God, Sandra, you're getting it too blue. Well, it looks a little bluish in the camera, but when you're right in front of it, it does not look that way. So I did correct it a little bit, but I still see it in the camera, not when I'm in front of the outlet with my naked eyes. So um, continue to work the layers and don't rush, just keep going at it like you see a little bit of this color you see a little bit of that color and all of a sudden it just starts to camouflage right into your backsplash it just starts to disappear right into your backsplash and it's a really nice feeling because now like i pass by this outlet all the time and i see how i just don't really see it it doesn't really stand out and it's something i've been wanting to do forever and i finally got to do it but it's nice that i'm doing it with you guys, you know, in the form of a video, in the form of a tutorial. And I hope that you guys are really enjoying this. And of course, I'm gonna ask for it. Please give me a like and subscribe and hit the notifications because this is how we advance in YouTube world. It really helps out. I'm trying to get my X amount of subscribers. I think it's a thousand subscribers and my X amount of view time. And I think that that is 4,000 hours. And I'm so behind, I'm so way behind the eight ball. But um, hopefully this tutorial and the very near future ones, because I have so many fun plans to do with this channel. I hope you guys really enjoy what I'm doing and help me grow in this YouTube world. Another thing I like to do as I am painting these outlets is to actually stop for a moment and stand back and just stay there for, you know, a few seconds. Look at your 
backsplash and look at the outlet and see what colors are standing out. Does it blend in or, or is it very standout-ish because of a certain color? So once in a while, standing back, looking at your project makes um, for the eye to get adjusted because there's something about being so close to the project that sometimes we're looking too hard when all we need to do is just stand back and see if things are blending in because this this art is all about that just make sure you camouflage the outlet onto your backsplash to the point where it's not standing out so much so here's a picture of what it looks like when i'm just done with it and i have the light um change a little bit because i i'm looking at it through the camera and i'm seeing how there are certain you know that blue cast that the black is giving and i'm just wondering if it has something to do with the lighting so that's why i changed it a little bit and i went from this degree to that degree just to see if that blue cast and it does it stays there so i'm just going to leave it alone but there you have it pretty much i'm doing the final little touches and i think it blends in pretty good it's like if you don't know that you're looking for an outlet you may not even see it <laughs> so i love this project it's, it's so much fun and it is so easy. You don't have to be all that artistic. You know, you can actually just play with it and see what happens. And once you're happy with the results of your project, you want to just leave it alone for several minutes. I say a good 20 minutes or so. Acrylics dry fast, but you still want to give it like a good 20 minutes. I utilize that time for picking up my mess, organizing things, playing with my dogs. Here they are wanting attention. Oh my God. They've been, you know, just playing with my feet and sitting on my feet this whole time. And, uh, they're just so funny. I love them. And once your outlet is completely dry, then you can focus on what you're going to use for clear coating it. Right? So I'm using this product that is called clear diamond finish, high performance clear coat. And I'm using the satin finish of this, and I will leave a link um, on the description of this product that I got through Amazon. So once I'm ready to just go ahead and spray the center part of my outlet, right? I want to protect the outer edges with the stencil we made earlier. And I want to focus on spraying just in the center. I know the overspray is going to go everywhere, but just focus on the center because I don't want to spray that without the outlet cover the edge of it so once i'm done with that and it gets a little tacky enough for me to handle then i take it apart again and i'm going to grab that outlet cover put it on a cardboard box but as you see when i actually take it apart i notice that a lot of the edges are not finished and this is the opportunity for me to just go ahead and complete those edges with the leftover paints and of course i'm going to continue the pattern right you don't want to like just go ahead and slap some paint you want to be continuing whatever pattern you see you have so once that is done and dry i'm going to do the clear coating outside of my house on that cardboard and then i wait like a good hour or two it's tacky but i can carefully put it right back together and take some pictures and show it off to you guys so let me know in the comments how you like this and if there's anything that i can do to improve the tutorials for the next project. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.